All right, guys, got this Subaru Outback 2.5 liter engine, and uh, the axle on the driver's side is leaking grease, so we're gonna replace that. And here's our axle. This is what I've been using, and these are pretty good axles. So this is the brand and uh, the part number for driver's side. Hopefully, it's correct because the the parts department people just sent it to me. There's a part number. Always use a new axle. Okay, do not put a rebuilt axle. And uh, there you go. That's the axle. It looks something like that. I hope it looks something like that. But anyways, not a big deal. We're gonna get this job in and out. Always pay attention to your reflector wheel for the axle or for the ABS. Sometimes the teeth, it'll be off or it'll be different. Always pay attention to it. You can measure the outer diameter. But anyways, let's get this job going. Yeah, shebang got the tire off magic so this is a fairly easy job but do go with the precaution take off this number 12 here take off this 12 here sometimes they're hard to come off but uh you gotta do it because you don't want to stretch when when, you, when this uh shot goes back and the spindle comes forward you're gonna stretch that cable okay remove it here too most likely i'm gonna take off this cotter pin and pop off this tie rod do not touch the brakes. We're gonna remove the axle. Oh, I'm not right there. Let's go underneath. All right, so there's our axle. All right, and uh, the boot is gone. It's done deal there. And uh, gonna pop out the axle, okay? And uh, that's about it. A lot of times, once we remove this bolt here, this little guy on uh, the axle won't slip through the, uh, the hub, it'll be seized up. If that's, that happens, I'd like to uh, not continue with the job. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Anyways, let's go on and let's take off this little guy to begin with. Okay, first thing first, I'm gonna remove the axle bolt there because I do wanna see if this axle moves back and you're gonna see the little bit spot punched downward. That's okay, if the, you could use this flat square I'd lift it up, but there's no threads underneath this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this 32 millimeter. So make sure you have a proper socket. All right, I do have this uh, 12 point or whatever this is, 24, 12 points, yeah. But if you have a regular one, cause I, I do have a regular one, but I cannot locate it right now. But this will do. And that comes right off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it a little bit of push with the hammer here. If it moves back and forth, then I'll continue the job. Because sometimes it won't move back and forth. Okay? So like I said, sometimes uh, it won't move back and forth. I would not suggest you hit it with the hammer, even though I can because there's no threads here. But the threads sometimes get damaged. Okay? Okay, did not budge at all. And there might be no play left in the axle. So I am gonna have to remove everything else a little bit further, okay? So I can see if the axle does move out. Okay, next what I'm gonna do is I am gonna remove this cotter pin and this tie rod bolt here. So use a the cutter. There you go, that comes out pretty good. My light action is terrible, okay? Anyways, now, I need to get a socket, it's a 19 millimeter. Okay, I'm sorry, this is an 18 millimeter. Yours might be different size because they do, once the tie rod change, they do change size, but there you go. Very simple to take that out. Okay, the next step is we're gonna remove this tie rod, but just to let you know, you cannot hit the tie rod itself. You could tap it here or use those tools. These tools will damage this too. So all you do is you tap right here. You're not gonna see me do that, but you can check out the videos how to remove a tie rod. You just hit hammer right here. Do not hit anything else, okay? Okay, once your tie rod is out, your whole thing's gonna have a lot of replay, okay? But next, we're gonna take off this. We're gonna take off these. I'm only gonna take off this because that should be more than enough free play. And then we're gonna take off the number 12 I showed you for the brake line on the opposite side. All right, number 12. Hopefully it's a 12, yep, it's a 12. Fairly easy to take out. A lot of times these Subarus, they're not so easy. Save all your bolts to the sides because it's gonna be the same bolts you're gonna use unless uh, 
your, you have new bolts or unless your axle doesn't come with the bolt. I think mine does come. I did look at it, but I didn't pay attention to if it had a bolt. But they usually they come with it. Okay. This is the brake line here. We're going to release that too. The reason why you don't do this is because if you don't do it, once that spindle comes forward, you'll stretch the line and that's it. Then you're going to need a new line there. Come on, come on. This one's a tough guy. It's probably rusted on the other end or corroded or dirt. Should have cleaned out the other end of the bolt, but it's all good. Woo, come on. How long are you? So by hand. All right, that should give us enough flexibility there. All right, so that's done. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove the two bolts, the studded bolts. We'll remove both of these nuts, and that should release everything. So let me get my tools ready. Okay, here's one. Sometimes it will free play, the other side it will spin with it, so use a, use a wrench on the opposite side, but I got lucky here. But to put it back, I'm definitely, most definitely gonna have to do that. And this one's spinning. Okay, when I got a wrench, so I see how this uh, bo the stud here is has a neck and then end. So on the bottom one is spinning, the top one we already took off. So, there you go. And that comes right off. So the top one had a washer. Remember that top one had a little washer. Once you take that off, both of these should just slip out. If you need to hit it softly with a rubber hammer, do that. Again, do not damage the bolts, threads. But guys, check this out. Let me bring the light this way. So now we should be able to release these two fairly easy. Just wiggle it around. Just make sure your strut on the top, the mount is not bad because if the mount is bad, then it's going to be pretty dangerous. What's going on? Let me get a pry bar. Small pry bar should do the job there. Small pry bar. There you go. And everything just falls down. So just slightly let it sit there. What we're going to do next is... All right, we're gonna go back down here and we're gonna take a look at this guy right here. All right, back to square one. If this guy does not go in, I came across where these, they won't slip through because they're seized. I'm not gonna express it too much. And a lot of people tell me, oh, he couldn't get the job done. But I had me in another shop that was close to me in my previous shop before we moved out of that place. We had took off the whole spindle, we heated, cherry red, bearing everything, done deal. The seals got melted, but the bad boy did not come off. We even put it on the press. Whoa! <laughs> it's not gonna budge. It just won't budge, okay guys? I'm not gonna go any further. And if you got anybody has any solution, they can send us a message. But I'm gonna give it a shot off the camera. This is a fail, pretty much. Woo! So you call a Subaru. Anyways, guys, I'm sorry. The axle ain't coming out. If it does come out, I'll continue. If not, this is all you're gonna see. So. Pretty much we was done, all you have to do is pry it out of the other end and the axle will fall right out of in your hand. But in this case, I do not change chances. I do not want to play any games with this guy. I'm going to talk to the customer. We'll put a new spindle on bearing. Bada bing, bada boom. And before that, I'll let him know. We'll heat it up. But things are going to be costly. And everything has turned into disaster already.